The Lithuanian Wars of Independence, also known as the Freedom Struggles Lithuanian, Lesves Kovos, refer to three wars Lithuania fought defending its independence at the end of World War I, with Bolshevik forces December 1918 to August 1919, Bermanchens June 1919 to December 1919, and Poland August 1920 to November 1920. The wars delayed international recognition of independent Lithuania and the formation of civil institutions. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Background. After the partitions of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in 1795, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania was annexed by the Russian Empire. The Lithuanian National Revival emerged during the 19th century and the movement to establish an independent nation-state intensified during the early 20th century. During World War I, Lithuanian territory was occupied by Germany from 1915 until the war ended in November 1918. On February 16, 1918, the Council of Lithuania declared the re-establishment of independence from all previous legal bonds with other states. The declaration asserted the right to self-determination, meaning the creation of a state within ethnic Lithuanian territories. The publication of the Act of Independence was initially suppressed by the German occupation forces, but on March 23, 1918, the Germans acknowledged the declaration. Their plans had shifted to the establishment of a network of satellite countries. However, Germany did not allow the Council to establish a Lithuanian military force, police force, or civic institutions. On November 11, 1918 Germany signed an armistice on the Western Front and officially lost the war and control over Lithuania. The first national government, led by Augustinus Voldemaras, was formed. Voldemaras issued a declaration that Lithuania did not need a military force, as it was not planning to engage in warfare, and that only a small militia was needed. This view was unrealistic, since military conflicts soon erupted. <laughs> Formation of the army The first legislative act creating an army was passed on November 23, 1918. Its development and organization moved slowly due to lack of funding, arms, ammunition, and experienced military commanders. On December 20 Antanas Smetona and Voldemaras went to Germany to request assistance. This arrived at the end of 1918, when Germany paid the Lithuanian government 100 million marks in reparations. The organization of the new Lithuanian army proceeded under the auspices of the German army, which was withdrawing in stages. However, the departure of both leaders created a difficult domestic situation. The Council of Lithuania released Voldemara's cabinet, Mykolas Slezovicius became Prime Minister of Lithuania and formed a cabinet on 26 December 1918. Perceiving an imminent threat to the state, he issued a proclamation several days later. Directed at Lithuanian men, the proclamation invited volunteers to join a force to defend the country. Lithuanian volunteers who agreed to join the military force were promised free land. Fulfilling its armistice obligation to support Lithuanian independence, Germany initially tried to organize a volunteer force from units remaining in Lithuanian territory, but those attempts failed. Crimps were sent to Germany to recruit volunteers. A division of volunteers was soon formed, who were paid 5 marks per day plus 30 marks per month. The first units began arriving in Lithuania during January 1919, although some of them were sent away because they were in poor condition. By the end of January, 400 volunteers were stationed in Alitas, Jonava, Kediniai, and Kaunas. 
They formed the basis for the 46th Saxonian Division, renamed in March to the Southern Lithuanian Saxonian Volunteer Brigade. The brigade consisted of the 18th, 19th, and 20th Regiments. The last of these German troops, also known as Freikorps, would leave Lithuania during July 1919. After successful attempts at mustering a voluntary force to defend Lithuanian territories, mobilization was begun on March 5, 1919 to expand the Lithuanian armed forces. It applied to men born between 1897 and 1899. At the end of summer 1919, the Lithuanian army numbered about 8,000 men. During the battles that followed, 1,700 Lithuanian volunteers died, more than 2,600 were injured, and 800 were missing in action. Historian Alphonsus Identas cites the total deaths as 1,444. Topic: War against the Bolsheviks. As revolution broke out in Germany, the German government withdrew support for the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, which had ceded Lithuania independence from Soviet Russia on November 5, 1918. Meanwhile, the Soviet Russian government renounced the treaty on November 13. The Bolsheviks attempted to conquer Lithuania from the east as part of their global proletarian revolution. Elsewhere, the Treaty of 1918 had also ceded independence to Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia in the Near East, and Belarus and Ukraine in Eastern Europe. The Soviet Union attacked these nations as well. But whereas they did fall, Lithuania and Poland would not. On December 8, 1918, a temporary revolutionary government in the capital city of Vilnius was formed, consisting solely of members of the Communist Party of Lithuania. Vinkas Mikovicius Kapsukas became its chairman. The following day a workers' Soviet was formed and declared that it had taken control of Vilnius. However, Voldemara's government and a Polish committee also declared their control of the city at the same time. The Germans finally abandoned Vilnius on December 31, 1918. On January 5, 1919 the Red Army took it and advanced further in the west. Local Polish paramilitary platoons led by General Władysław Witko fought the Red Army in Vilnius for five days. The Lithuanian government had left Vilnius along with the regular German army. On January 1, 1919 local communists in the town of Sauliai, about 200 km west of Vilnius, rebelled and created a 1,000-man Samogitian regiment. When the Red Army entered the town on January 15 Soviet power already existed there. On January 18 the Soviets and Germans signed a treaty and designated a demarcation line that barred Bolshevik forces from directly attacking Kaunas, Lithuania's second largest city. The Red Army would need to attack through Alitis or Kedainiai. German volunteers led by Rudiger von der Goltz arrived in Lithuania, took up positions along the Rodna Kaisiadoris Kaunas line, and helped the Lithuanian forces, commanded by Jonas Variakogis, to stop the Red Army advance near Kedainiai. On February 8, during a reconnaissance mission, the first Lithuanian soldier to die in the wars, Povilis Luxis, was killed near Tauchunai. On February 10 the joint forces captured Sita and forced the Red Army to retreat. The success of this operation lifted the Lithuanian army's morale. During the first half of February 18, the regiment of Saxon volunteers stationed between Kaisiadoris and Zizmariai engaged in skirmishes on their line, and the joint force captured Giesnas in an operation held between February 10 and February 13. After this setback the Bolshevik 7th Rifleman Regiment began to disintegrate, and many soldiers deserted. The regiment could have been completely destroyed, if the Germans had not refused to pursue the retreating units. 
On February 12 Bolshevik forces attacked Alitas. Lithuanian 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th companies of the 1st Infantry Regiment had to withstand pressure from the Red Army, while members of the German units left their posts. During this battle the first Lithuanian officer to die in the wars was killed, Antanas Duozapovicius, the commander of the 1st Infantry Regiment. After the loss of their commander the regiment began retreating towards Marajampol. On the night of February 14–15, German forces retook Alitas. Towards the end of 1918 the officer Povilis Plechevicius, together with his brother Alexandras, began organizing partisans in Skuodas. On February 9 the partisans took an oath, and on February 16 they paraded in the town square. A partisan unit commanded by army officers was also organized in Jonaskelis. The movement of the Bolsheviks towards East Prussia worried Germany, and they sent volunteers Brigade Schorlen, commanded by General Rudiger von der Goltz to free the railroad line linking Leopaya, Mazykii, Radvaliskis, and Kedinii. At the end of February the Lithuanian partisans, supported by German artillery, took Mazykii and Seda, and pursued Bolsheviks to Kursenai. On February 27, 1919, German volunteers supported by Plechevisius's partisans and Jonaskelis partisans, defeated the Samogitian regiment in a battle near Luoke. By that time the regiment had been incorporated into the Red Army's 2nd Latvian International Rifleman Division. On the same day the Lithuanian Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic was declared. On March 7, 1919 the Germans took the town of Kursenai, on March 11 Saulii, on March 12 Radvaliskis. On March 14 Lithuanian partisans and German forces captured Sadova. The German troops were active in Lithuania until May 31, 1919. In Kedinii a stationed volunteer regiment had secured its positions, in March it started small expeditions into nearby towns. Local volunteers with good knowledge of the location succeeded in driving Bolshevik supporters out of Ramigala, Truskava, and Krekanava, but these areas were soon recaptured by the Bolsheviks. These expeditions into several towns were successfully carried out until the end of March. As a reward for its successful operations, the volunteer regiment was given a name on March 22, the separate Panavezis Volunteer Regiment. Due to a succession of losses, the Bolshevik forces stationed in Panavezis and Kupiskis rebelled, and were quelled only by a Red Army division from neighboring Latvia. The Bolshevik morale underwent deeper declines, and between March 19 and March 24 the forces left Panavezis. Lithuanian forces entered the city on March 26, but the Red Army retook it on April 4. In April the Lithuanian army began moving towards Vilnius, taking Zasliai and Vievis, but their advances stopped on April 8. In the meantime, on April 19, the Polish army had taken Vilnius from the Bolsheviks and forced them to withdraw their left wing from territories south of the Neris River. The shortened front line that resulted allowed Lithuania to send stronger forces to northeastern Lithuania, and carry out operations there. By May 3, the separate Panavezis Volunteer Regiment, supported by the 18th Regiment of Saxonian Volunteers, had secured Csakai, Atkoshrai, and Deltuva. They had also captured UK Merge. Lithuanian units were the first to enter the city. In the beginning of March, the mobilization began and Lithuanian forces increased their numbers. At the end of April the Lithuanian army's chain of command was reformed. General Silvestris Zukauskas was designated chief of staff, and on May 7 he assumed command of the entire Lithuanian army. A complete reorganization took place over the next new weeks, and the strengthened Lithuanian forces were now ready to push the Red Army back. 
Zukauskas decided to concentrate his Lithuanian forces in two areas. The 1st Brigade, centred in the UK Merge Utena Zarasai region, was called the Vilk Merge Group. The 2nd Brigade, centred in the Kedinii Panavesis Rokaskis region, was called the Panavesis Group. Operations planning was undertaken during the middle of May. On May 17 the reorganised army carried out its first operation, capturing the town of Kirklii. Preparations were made for an advance on Enikshii, which was taken on May 19, along with Schemenes and Atlanta. On May 22 the Lithuanian forces launched an advance on Utena, reaching the village of Diktarai. The initiative was met by a counterattack, and the Lithuanian forces retreated. The attack was stopped for several days, and line Alanta Schemenes Enikshii was taken. A drive towards Utena started on May 31, and the city was secured on June 2. The Panavesis group launched a drive towards Panavesis on May 18. On May 19 the brigade secured Panavesis and Ragova, on May 20 its field staff moved to Panavesis. The city withstood a Bolshevik attack that took place on May 21 and 22. On May 24 Zukauskas ordered both groups to push farther. The Panavesis group advanced towards Kupiskis and secured Subasius on May 25. On May 30 they took Rokiskis. Bolshevik forces left Kupiskis on the night of May 30–31, and Lithuania secured that city on June 1. The advance continued, and on 10 June Lithuanian forces reached the territory controlled by Latvian partisans Green Guard and supplied them with munitions. The Lithuanian successes continued, and by the end of August, the Bolsheviks were defeated near Zarasai. On October 2 Lithuania took Grieva, a suburb of Daugavpils. The Lithuanian forces stopped at the Daugava River near the border with Latvia, and the front line stabilized. The short-lived Litbel government was discontinued. On July 12, 1920, Lithuania signed a peace treaty with the Russian SFSR. Russia recognized Lithuania's independence and its right to the Vilnius region. This treaty was not recognized by Poland or by the short-lived Democratic Republic of Belarus. Several historians have asserted that despite its treaty with Russia, Lithuania was very close to being taken over by local communist forces that were backed by the Bolsheviks. In this view, it was only the Polish victory against the Soviets in the Polish-Soviet War that disrupted these plans. Topic: War against the Bermanshans. The Bermanshans, named for their leader Pavel Bermont Avalov and formerly known as the West Russian Volunteer Army, were a mixed German-Russian army. The army included Russian prisoners of war, released by the German Empire after promising to fight against the Bolsheviks in the Russian Civil War, and members of the Freikorps, stationed in Latvia and Lithuania after Germany lost the war. The official goal of this army was to fight Bolsheviks along with Alexander Kolchak's forces, but its actual agenda was the retention of German power in the territories they had taken during World War I. At first the Bermanshans operated mostly in Latvia, but in June 1919, they crossed the Lithuanian-Latvian border and took the town of Kursenai. At that time the Lithuanians were engaged in battles with the Bolsheviks and could only issue diplomatic protests. By October, the Bermanshans had taken considerable territories in western Lithuania Samogitia, including the cities of Saulii, Berzai, and Radvaliskis. After they had annexed a town, the Bermanshans enforced a rule that only the Russian language could be used to conduct administration. They became notorious for robbing and looting the local populace, who began organizing local partisan groups. 
During October 1919, Lithuanian forces attacked the Bermanshans, achieving an important victory on November 21 and 22 near Radvaliskis, a major railway centre. The Lithuanians collected significant spoils of war there, including 30 airplanes and 10 cannons. Later clashes were stopped by the intervention of an Entente representative, the French general Henry Niesel, who oversaw the withdrawal of German troops. The Lithuanian military followed the retreating Bermanshan soldiers to prevent them from further looting and to ensure their complete evacuation. By December 15, the Bermanshans were completely removed from Lithuania. Topic: War against Poland. In June 1920, the Russian army had taken Vilnius. Shortly after their defeat in the Battle of Warsaw, the withdrawing Red Army handed the city over to Lithuania under the terms of the peace treaty signed on July 12. Negotiations were started in an attempt to avoid an armed conflict between Poland and Lithuania. On October 7, the Sawalki Agreement was signed. However, on October 8, before the agreement was to formally take effect, General Lukjan Zeligowski, acting on orders from the Polish leader Józef Pilsudski, staged a mutiny by Polish troops. The Vilnius and the Sawalki regions were overrun. Initially the Polish forces did not meet much armed resistance, and a later Lithuanian counter-offensive was stopped by Military Commission of League of Nations. Since the Vilnius region was controlled by Poland, the Lithuanian government declared Kaunas the temporary capital of Lithuania. The dispute over Vilnius would continue throughout the interwar period. Topic: Zeligowski's mutiny. A staged mutiny arranged by the Polish chief of state Joseph Pilsudski was carried out by Polish forces led by General Lukjan Zeligowski. These forces took control of Vilnius in the fall of 1920. However, shortly after this, Lithuanian forces started to gain the upper hand in this conflict and the mutinous forces gained support from the regular Polish army. This military action is considered as a continuation of the Polish-Lithuanian War in historiography. See also Latvian War of Independence Estonian War of Independence Polish-Soviet War Central Lithuania Forest Brothers <laughs>